My video today will be talking about candlestick phones and some of the desk mount series phones. Presently we have three candlestick phones. The one on the left is a manual Kellogg phone. The middle phone is a Western Electric dial. And then we have an automatic electric dial. Down in the lower left, we have a D-mount style phone. They had 102s, 202s, and so forth. There were hundreds and hundreds of different models made amongst all of the different manufacturers. The phones you're looking at are only half of the phone. There's a bell box slash subset that these phones connect to. When these phones were removed from service, or this uh, vintage phone, apparently the ringer boxes were left behind as extension ringers or discarded into the trash. When you find candlesticks, the odds are maybe one out of a hundred may actually have the original subset ringer box. And the same would be with any of the desk mount phones. So if you are collecting this vintage of phones, that is something to keep in mind. I will make a very quick pass by my subsets, which will all be closed up and they're under these phones, so they're difficult to get to and I'll just show you the styles and so forth and then I will open up one of many hundred different type bell box subsets for you to see what they look like. There was later in life uh, new wiring configurations uh, using more modern telephone components to make these phones functional again. Most of the people who collect the magneto wooden phones, the candlestick phones, or the early desk stands generally are collecting them just for a cosmetic uh, display. Rarely will they be made to work. Some might have one or two that are operational uh, to demonstrate how they work and so forth, but due to the um, rarity of the Bellwalk subsets and the cost of them, uh, if you're planning on collecting 30, 40, or 100 of these, you'll spend an incredible amount of money just on ringer boxes and subsets. So it's not that common for people to collect them. Here are a few of my desk stands. Most of what we're looking at are Western Electric. However, they were made by a lot of different manufacturers and a lot of similarities. Uh, depending on who they were made by, some parts were interchangeable on some of the phones. Uh, it was not uncommon to find these phones that was referred to as a manual phone that had no dial because in the days of these phones, the dial systems were generally only in your larger cities. So your rural country settings would have had manual service. There was no need for a dial. So lots of these phones just had what was referred to as a dial blank. Here is a phone that was set up only for manual service. One thing about this phone, it has a coiled handset cord. That was not common uh, at the beginning. They would have had straight handset cords. And then later on, towards the end of the life of some of this particular age period of phone, they did finally go to coiled cords as an option. Here are some of the subset bell boxes. I have Western, Kellogg, Automatic Electric, and so forth. Due to where these are mounted, they have phones sitting in front of them and it would be difficult to make a video showing the insides. So I will show a video of one common phone and 
um, they all were pretty much the same as in um, the needed configuration for induction coils, ringers. Here's a nickel uh, Western Electric candlestick phone. This was made prior to the turn of the century. This telephone cannot be equipped with a dial because there's nowhere uh, to add the dial unless you use the aftermarket uh, dial mount. And there's too many candlestick phones that were intended to have dials on it. It would be a shame to add a dial to a phone like this. The phone is wired to what is called the bell box subset. This particular bell box subset was on a magneto exchange. If this subset had the re magneto removed and wired differently, it would be a common battery phone. When the refurbishers refurbished these phones, lots of them had the magnetos removed because they converted them to common battery and just recycled the phones and the ringer boxes for many years. I have opened up a couple of my Magneto wall phones. At the very top of this box is the induction coil. There were different types of induction coils made, but they pretty much looked the same. The black unit below, which I hope you can see, is what's called a condenser. The modern term would be called a capacitor today. And you have the magneto. This is a generator that when you operate the generator, it produces a voltage to ring the ringers on the line or the operator, depending on how it was configured. Below, I'm using D-cell batteries for my uh, local battery. However, in the early days, there would have been dry cells or glass jar batteries inside of this. This is another magneto phone. This particular one has a feature that you can pick up the receiver and the hook switch only goes up halfway until you operate the release. The purpose for that was on multi-party lines, you could pick up the receiver and listen on the line without completing the circuit to the transmitter so you would not be barging in on an active conversation, but yet you could hear what was going on. The coil that's stamped in the vermilion ink is an induction coil. And then we have, in this case, a four bar magneto. And then down below, again, where you would normally have the batteries, we have D cell batteries. I have a subset here that was made in the 20s and 30s, 40s. This subset has a relay inside of it, which is the silver component on the right hand side next to the ringer. There's the terminal strip for connecting the phone to it, and then the induction coil. This particular subset, of course, I have not cleaned it up yet, but was used for multi-party phone service. This is the front of the subset with the cover closed. There are two candlestick phones and one desk mount phone and as well as a magic all program unit which would have been an item for the uh, late 60s and so forth the candlestick phones have what is called a receiver and that's the unit hanging out on the left side of the phone and then the transmitter which people refer to as the mouthpiece but they're actually technically called transmitters these were the old style uh, transmitters and later on they upgraded them to a uh, what was called a bulldog and that was an F series uh, transmitter which greatly improved the audio quality of the phones. I have a video where it's called the evolution of the hundred year phone call where we made 
phone calls from magneto phones and common battery phones through different types of switching systems and including a cell phone so a person could hear some of the audio of what these phones sounded like in their early day. For the folks that are beginning to collect phones, there are two primary telephone collector clubs in the United States. The Antique Telephone Collectors Association and the Telephone Collectors International. The Antique Telephone Collectors Association, referred to as the ACTA, primarily collects telephones from the 1930s on back to uh, prior to turn of the century and some of the um, 1879, uh, 1880s and so forth because there's almost none of those phones left in existence. They have a great <clears throat> resource center on how to refinish wood phones and refinish different types of candlesticks and desk stands. The Telephone Collectors International has a fantastic library for the telephones basically from the 30s on. The difference between the two clubs is the uh, TCI, Telephone Collectors International, is involved in the wide technical aspects of the entire telephone network, not just the telephone sets. The ACTA has a lot of members who collect a lot of the attachments that was designed to attach to different telephones, advertising and so forth. Depending on a person's interest and what they collect, uh, both clubs have great uh, resources um, for technical as well as helping people learn how to repair phones and some degree of what to collect. There are thousands and thousands of models of phones that's been made in the last hundred plus years. There's no one out there that has one of every kind or could begin to describe one of every kind. My video intent is only to touch on some of the more common stuff and what is required to make it functional. I do not provide information on sanding, painting, woodworking, or anything of that lines because that's way out of my league. I deal with the uh, soft plastic telephones and the ABS plastic telephones. And I will be producing a limited quantity of videos showing them and some tricks to make them functional and to make them cosmetically appealing. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment below. I generally do not ask people to like and subscribe, but I'm not going to ask you not to. Thanks.